too, so he really, really <laughs> wants to be mono blue. He has eight creatures with protection from blue in the main deck, and that certainly is an, an adaptation to the metagame here. But that's also going to be good for him in this matchup because he's got eight creatures that are good against attention to and Azorius Charm. And Shroud is going to get the beat started quickly here with an experiment one, while Duke is just going to do what blue-white does, which is play a few lands and pass. Yeah, so I mean, this matchup, if you if you know your history a little bit, uh, in that Pro Tour that Andrew Shrout top aided, that was Pro Tour Dragon's Maze. Mm -hmm. um, it was a Pro Tour filled with Esper and Revelation decks that was, in the hands of Craig Wesco, taken down by a green-white aggro deck. Uh, so green-white, actually, this is a matchup that it has a lot of play in. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of jockeying for position, and, and you know, it's kind of funny because the green-white deck is actually kind of the flash deck in this matchup. They've got Boon Seder, they've got Advent of the Worm, they have cards like Selesnya Charm and Rootborn Defenses that the blue-white deck has to actually worry about. Right now, all Shroud has is a 1-1 one -one experiment one, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some end-of-turn action here in the next turn. Yeah, the players are a little slow out of the gates this game because of mulligans. Uh, Reed actually was on five cards. Andrew was on six. Uh, granted, Andrew's on the draw. Reed has a divination. So both players are now kind of getting up to speed on their decks, but yeah. the really the early game has just been lands, which you have to think favors Reed Duke. I'm inclined to agree as you're going to see an elixir of mortality after that divination. And no boon or no celestial charm, no nothing there from Shroud. So I wonder what his hand is. He also has Skylasher too, which is another flash spell. So he has nothing except for a boring old experiment one. I don't know yeah. if I buy it. I mean, at this point, you have to think, or certainly suspicious of an advent of the worm when he's on four mana. I can't imagine that Andrew would have kept a six card hand with just experiment one and nothing else. In fact, my, like where I read, I would probably be expecting a pair of Advent of the Worms to come out here. Yeah. All right, so the Duke is going to play a Jace Architect of Thought. That's going to go down to two. Here's an Attention Sphere. There's an Island, and that is a Mutavolt. So let's see how Shrout decides to split these up. Well, if he is in the double Advent hand, he has to be very scared of that Detention Sphere. He pro you know, that card will be very good against... Well, two things with the same name. And you <laughs> see there, he does respect the detention sphere. He's putting it in its own pile. So the big question here, does, does Duke need lands, or does he actually need spells at this point? He has resolved two divinations. He does have four lands in play. Obviously, this is a very mana-hungry deck playing 27 lands, and he is going to take two more lands, among them a Mutavolt. So not just lands that do tap for mana, lands that do other things, and he's just going to pass the turn back. And there is, finally, an Advent of the Worm. Right, so now Andrew has a real amount of power on the board. And he evolves experiment one, makes an advent. What I really like about that play from Reed is he immediately minus two the Jace as opposed mm -hmm. to plus one-ing it. Um, basically expecting the advent of the worm, this attack would have been enough to exactly kill a Jace on five, even if he had plussed it. So we'll probably see Jace bite the dust here via experiment one and then advent of the worm, take a chunk out of Reed's life total. But again, I'm really interested to see what Shroud's got in his hand. The one thing I like about the Slesny deck, again, is that it just gets to play as the flash deck in this matchup. Reed doesn't really know what end of turn threat's going to come, because there are so many things that do have flash, he just knows that something's going to come and he needs to try to play around the bevy of things that Shroud can do accordingly. One thing that Shroud doesn't actually have in his main deck that Wesco had in his Pro Tour deck was Reborn Defenses. You're right. not going to find any of those in his main deck, but it's a different format, of course. Well, what I like about Shroud is Shroud's deck because he doesn't necessarily need the Reborn Defenses because if you count creatures with haste and flash, you know, cre then Shroud has a full 20 creatures in his main deck here that, that can attack Reed. He has Celestia Charm, Skylashers, Mist Cutters, Advents, and Boon Satyrs. Mm -hmm. So Detention Sphere is going to take care of that Worm Token, as you had predicted. So let's see what Shroud wants to do on his end step here, because it, it, it feels like he has something. Yeah. Well, remember, <laughs> uh, Shroud didn't give him the Detention Sphere. That was a second one. Oh, in that's true. Hand. And I was expecting the second Advent. Uh, Shroud does not seem to have one. He does have a Voice of Resurgence here. I feel like he just has a lot of lands. Was this this is probably this a miscutter hydra, right? I, I would think yeah. it is. And so that's gonna be a hydra for one, two, three, four, five. So that's a five power creature, and it will evolve experiment one. Not sure if Reed saw this coming. He does have a last breath at the ready. Yeah, I think he has to make that play mm -hmm. here. So that will mitigate some of this damage. Um, Reed is not playing any Celestial Flares in the deck, so leaving the Mist Cutter alone doesn't really help him take care of it. He's gonna, he's pretty much on the Elspeth or Supreme Verdict plan to get that guy off the table. Now Elspeth, I assume, is he on the one? He's on the one Elspeth, one Elixir version. He's on one Elspeth, okay. one Elixir. Yep, I believe he's on the the same 75 that uh, Huey Jensen's on for this tournament. Not much of a surprise there. You see, Duke is gonna play. A planes. Oh no, does he have the Elspeth? And he there it does. Is. Wow. So the one Elspeth in the deck is going to create three soldier tokens where he could have minus the Elspeth. Well, he could have minus it, but remember, Shroud's deck does have a fair amount of haste in it. You'd hate to lose the Elspeth to another Mist Cutter. Now, this is, this is kind of interesting, too, right? Because 
by by doing it this way for Duke, he kind of opens himself himself up to a Slesnia charm trample. Right. But the other way, he just kills the Miss Cutter. But then he's you know worried about a different set of threats. So now Miss Cutter is going to be coming in to the red zone predictably. And now how does Reed want to block? Does he want to put three guys in front of it? Does he want to put one in front well, of it? Three guys plays around one Celestia Charm. Reed actually can't play around two Celestia Charms, which is what I believe Shrout has. Um, so my guess is that he'll play around the first one. Okay. Uh, so to do, in order to do that, what he needs to do, so you have to assume it's a 7-7 seven, seven trample. You want to put three toughness in it in front of it so it can't kill a five. So I think a triple block is probably the play here. Very interesting to see him not minus the Elspeth take care of the Miss Cutter. Is he going to single block? Oh, no. He's not going to play around any of the Celestine Charms, and that's certainly going to get one. One. And two. Copy the Celestine Charm. Plus two, plus two. Make it plus four, plus four, and trample. Well, now the question is, did the Miss Cutter Hydra go at Elspeth or at Reed? Oh, I think it, that Hydra yeah, was at Reed. That Hydra was at Reed, and that is going to do it for that game. So Andrew Shrout does win game one over Reed Duke. Green-White aggro up a game over blue-white control. Did not expect to see green-white aggro coming into this tournament. Certainly not this build. No, I mean, this build is certainly, you could say, has adapted to the metagame. Yeah. Um, I think that last play was very interesting. I had assumed that the Miss Cutter Hydra was going at Elspeth. Um, that's a really, that is an aggressive line he takes. He took there by swinging it at Reed, and, you know, it really paid dividends there. Yeah, um, I mean, I kind of like that play, right? Where, do you think, do you think that Reed is going to play around double Slezian Charm in that situation? Well, clearly he doesn't. If Reed does put all three creatures in front of the Mist Cutter, then Andrew can't actually make his swing lethal that turn. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the Elspeth will be able to take care of his Hydra, and Andrew actually could be in a pretty difficult spot. But it does have the upside that unless Reed makes the all-in block, he's just dead on the board. Yeah. So we're going to take a look at the sideboards here as both players do shuffle up. You see Shrout taking a look. Duke will be doing the same shortly. You've got Reeds in front of you. He'll be on the play this game. Doesn't want to mulligan to five, obviously, but what can he do here? Well, Reed's game plan here is going to be nothing too surprising. He has another pair of Last Breaths, which will come in in the matchup. They're good against Experiment Ones. They're excellent against Voice of Resurgences. He doesn't yet know about the Skylashers, but once he, if he learns about them, he'll be happy to have more Last Breaths, too. So those are, are for the matchup. Outside of that... Um, there, he may also bring in a glare of heresy, though there aren't too many white creatures for him to target with it. Uh, he doesn't have the celestial flares in the sideboard, so he has cut back a little bit on the amount of small creature hate that you'd expect out of a blue-white deck. We'll take a look over here at Shroud's sideboard. He's got four copies on Unflinching Courage, a card that is really underplayed right now, but that's because green-white just isn't seeing a lot of play. So if there's a reason to play green-white, it's that is certainly one of the cards, but obviously not going to come in for this matchup. Three copies of Witch Stalker, the three-mana, three-three hexproof creature. Might not be so bad in this particular matchup. Three Glare of Heresy. Of course, Duke has copies of Detention Sphere in his deck. He also has that Lone Elspeth, so do you want to board in some number of those? I think there's potential of that. Three copies of Last Breath, an additional Boon Seder, and a Scavenging Ooze. So the options I like here, I think the Boon Seder is an easy one to want to bring in. Absolutely. Glare of Heresy and Witch Stalker. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Maybe in some numbers? Yeah, so my guess is that the Witch Stalker is for the mono-black matchup. Okay. Um, it's It can be good against Blue-White because Blue-White can't target it. But then again, Blue-White does still have tools to deal with it. It does still have Supreme Verdict. It could have Celestial Flare, though it doesn't right now. Uh, I think we'll see Shout bring in some number of those nonetheless. But as far as like the power-toughness ratio to mana cost, Witch Stalker is a little underwhelming. Uh, Glare of Heresy out of some decks can be great against our Detention Sphere because Shrout has a lot of creature tokens or cards like, you know, creature tokens. He can't, hitting a spear with a Glare of Heresy does not always get the creature back. So it, boarding in cards like that in this matchup can be problematic for Andrew. You know, if he gets into the game of trying to hit Reed's Detention Spheres, that's really not the game plan he wants to be playing. He'd rather just play another threat. Yeah, I think I agree with you on that one, too. It's where I, I understand why you would want to board Glare in, but, you know, but I kind of feel like it's a situation where, again, as you mentioned, there's a lot of creature tokens, so Detention Sphere is going to take care of the creature a high percentage of the time, period. And also, you know, there will be chan there will be times, I think, where, you know, you draw Glare of Heresy, and it might just end up being pretty dead and not do exactly what you want it to do, and you certainly don't want to draw multiples, I feel like. So maybe he boards in one. He's certainly got cards to board out in the matchup. He's got four copies of Vanisher Priest, and he has a Last Breath. So that's five cards to sideboard out very easily in the matchup. You can argue the Scavenging Ooze is the sixth one to board out, and then we can see the three Witch Stalkers, the Boon Seder, and then some copies of Glove Heresy come in. Yeah, I think because he has cards like Vanisher Priest that are so low impact in the matchup, Witch Stalker is pretty much, you can expect to see all the Witch Stalkers included. Um, he just wants to continue to make more creatures, basically force Reed to have the right removal at the right time. Mm -hmm. 
Shroud is going to go down to six. The Duke looks pretty happy. As we make our way through our standard invitational, oh, excuse me, our invitational, our standard portion of the invitational. Cedric Phillips, Matthias Hunt, at SCG Live, hashtag SCG INVI for your tweets over the course of the day. Today will be a busy one. We've got four rounds of standard, then four rounds of legacy. We'll have our top eight decided for tomorrow morning, and then we'll be cutting into our standard open, in which we expect a very large attendance here in Las Vegas. And we'll do our quarterfinal round this evening to wrap things up for that tournament. And then tomorrow, we'll do it all again. But as Ruben and Glenn told you guys at the top of the day, a lot of fun announcements were announced yesterday with our Players' Championship, with our new token series, uh, all the things that are happening here for the year 2014 of Star City Games Organized Play. It's a big year next year, and it's a fun way to conclude this year here with the Invitational. Yeah, um, the announcements, I think, you know, are have been pretty exciting, especially the, I'm really excited about the Organized Play changes for next year. Me too. Um, right now, we're seeing, you know, our, end of the year invitational it's a great event to build up to but were this next year there would be another event following this yeah which is would be even bigger yes it'll be absolutely huge as the Nazorius Guildgate is going to start the show for Reed you've got a Selesnia Guildgate on Shroud side both of those guys are waiting for temples <laughs> they need temples absolutely. in their deck so let's see if Shroud gets off to a decent start this game. All right, so he's got two mana, and that's a scavenging ooze. So I, wonder if, I was wondering if he was going to leave that in. Last Breath is going to take care of that. Similarly, if that had been a Voice of Resurgence, it would have died as well. So I think Fleece Mainline was the card that Shroud was looking for, but he only has two right. of those in his deck. Yeah, uh, scavenging ooze is not particularly gr great in this matchup. I think Shroud still plays them because they're just two drops that are, that are fine to cast. Um, he only has so many things that he can board out, but a little underwhelming. There is the Witch Stalker. You see Duke taking a look. We'll bring it up for you guys here at home. Doesn't see a ton of play. Yeah, originally it was hyped as the new card in Bant Hexproof, um, which I think a lot of people were looking for back when that was a deck last season. It really didn't materialize that way. Um, but now we're seeing it, especially these all removal spell decks showing up. Maybe it's finding a home in standard again. Yeah, I mean, this actually seems like a pretty good tool in this matchup. And as you mentioned against Mono Black, where, you know, the... Um, you know, the Hexproof is a big deal. The plus one, plus one counter is not going to come up a ton. But just the fact that it's a difficult creature to kill makes it a good sideboard card. Absolutely. So it's going to get some points of damage here. Uh, gets its first attack in on Reed. Again, and it's nice because Temple Garden is going to come in untapped here. And now Shroud gets to play this game again. Of I've got a threat. It's one that you can't answer efficiently. And now I can do everything I need to do on the end of turn and then make you tap out on your own turn. And maybe he can set up what he set up last game which is just by retapping on his own turn, you know, a big hit with a uh, with a miscutter hydra. Yeah, well, I, he makes you know a pretty telltale play here. He shocks <laughs> for his fourth land and passes the turn. I don't think there's really any confusion that he's going to be playing Advent of the Worm. Yeah, we saw a lot of this back in May at Pro Tour Dragons Maze, of course, with Craig Wesco and everybody else who was playing Green White at that tournament. As here is a Jace that's going to go down immediately again, going to turn over a Blind Obedience, a Supreme Verdict, and a Mutavault. Blind Obedience coming in. Yeah, so Blind Obedience should be pretty good against the Mistcutter Hydras from Andrew's deck. Uh, on top of that, it gives Reed a little bit of life gain, which certainly can't hurt in this matchup. But I, I think out of these three cards, Supreme Verdict really is is the card here. Yeah, I think it is the best one. But Reed is going to opt for the Enchantment and the Mutavolt. Maybe he needs the land. He does have a full hand. There is your Mutavolt. And let's see what Shroud's going to play on the end step. I'm not sure if Duke has a discard or not right now. Uh, it looks like Reed is at eight cards. He's going to have to discard one. Remember, Strut actually does have to play. If he has Advent, he has to play it before Reed discards. Is it a Skylasher? It is a Skylasher. Okay. And it's a it's second another Skylasher. Skylasher. So there's a second thing it could have been. It wasn't actually the, the Advent. It was a double Skylasher. That's interesting because Duke didn't take the verdict here. Does he have another one in his hand? That's the big question. As Shrout has to decide how he wants to go about attacking now. Yeah, Shroud does have a Mist Cutter Hydra in hand. It looks like he's going to not sw not play it right now. I think he's still pretty worried about the Supreme Verdict. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, uh, and at this point, I, I wouldn't make a move either if I was Shroud. I think his board is good enough where, again, he doesn't have to add anything to it. Duke has to actually take care of what he's got. He does have a Supreme Verdict to do just that. So a three for one there for Reed. We'll see if Shroud has something in the end step. He does. It's a Boon Seder. Right, and isn't this just the what I think the green... White deck is adapted to. I mean, everything either has haste or flash. Um, each creature, in some ways, functions as a burn spell. You know, Shout was pretty sure that those Skylashers were only going to get one hit in, but yeah, well, he was just fine playing them. Yeah. 
And I actually really like how this green white deck plays just because it does play on the end step of the opponent the entire time. There is an experiment one. There is a Witch Doctor going to evolve there. And I think it's safe to play out the threats like this because he's already seen one verdict resolve and he put one on the bottom. So does Reed have the third one? Right, and he's really just challenging Reed to have the verdict. And I like that. The one of the dominant strategies you can do against blue-white control is you can't actually beat them when they draw all the right things at the right time. Mm -hmm. You have to challenge them just to have it. And Shroud did take the challenge there. There's the Miscutter Hydra. It's going to come into play tap. Normally it's coming to play tapped and attacking, but not this time due to Blind Obedience. Yeah, Blind Obedience is doing a ton of work here. And as that's Shroud's last card, all Reed has to do is answer that final Miscutter. Granted, what Shroud was able to set up is he was able to get a verdict on the bottom of Reed's deck and two verdicts in the yard, and none of them hit Miscutter Hydra. Yep. So there's only one left here. Now, what are the outs here that Reed does have? Because you mentioned Celestial Flare when we were sideboarding, but he doesn't have those in his deck list this weekend. Right. It really is just the fourth Supreme Verdict and the Elspeth as far as getting rid of the Mistcutter Hydra. What he can do is just Revelation his way past the Mistcutter Hydra, and okay. I think that's the line we're going to see him take. He can start extorting with Blind Obedience, and you know he can just keep a s large enough stream of life gain going that he doesn't really have to answer the Hydra for a while. You see a detention sphere among the cards that were drawn there for Reed, but that's not going to be any good. So you might see Mutavault on Chump blocking duty here yep. sooner rather than later. Yep, Reed plays two Muta three Mutavaults, so he could double block a Mist Cutter. That's another possible removal spell. Um, obviously, getting rid of two lands is not a great situation from a control deck, but it's, one that it's an option that Reed has. And he could do exactly what you mentioned, of course, which is just chain together a couple revelations, and there is another one. So this right. one's going to be for five. Duke is going to move to eight, but more importantly, he's going to get himself five more cards. Well, he, he wants to chain together revelations, and he'd really like to actually hit the one of Elixir of Immortality. Yeah. There's two Supreme Verdicts in his yard and one Supreme Verdict on the bottom of the deck. It would be great for Reed if he can shuffle them back in to get them spaced out through his deck again. So he's got a bevy of cards in his hand. Don't know how relevant all those options are. You've seen Azorius Charm. We know he has a detention sphere. So he's got some, some cards that do things, just nothing that does great stuff against Miscutter Hydra. You mentioned Elixir. That's one of the cards that he's really looking for. And you can see that he's really starting to go to work here in his head about how he wants to craft a game plan. All he's got to worry about is this one Miscutter Hydra because the next one's going to come into play tapped and he can deal with it accordingly. So he's going to start with a Temple of, of Deceit. Excuse me. He's going to scry here. Well, all the cards Reed has that answer one Miscutter Hydra answer two Miscutter Hydras. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he really isn't worried about the second one. He's just, you know, he has to consider he's taking four every turn. So he needs to either chump block, he needs to Supreme Verdict, or Supreme Revelation, or here we have Elixir of Immortality. And with the Extort, is actually a six-point life gain. Extort, we that's not really a mechanic you see much in Constructed. It's pretty much only on Blind Obedience. Is that the only real Extort card that sees a lot yeah, of play? Yeah, I mean... I, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think there were, was a time where people talked about playing Thrall Parasite. Um, that was only in block, though, and didn't even materialize there. Blind Obedience has really been the only one that uses it. Well, here is a Elvish Mystic after Shroud does attack for four, and Shroud is just living off the top of his deck, which is a very uncomfortable feeling. We are playing against a blue-white player of Reed Duke's caliber. He's going to start by cycling a Zorius Charm, draw a Mystery card, and the interesting thing here is when exactly is Duke going to cash in that elixir? Because we know what's going to happen at some point. Well, right now, he got a free extort off that Azorius Charm. He can't get an extort off the second one because Mutaval is colorless. But I think he's just, he wants to try to hit his outs first before he shuffles up and goes for them a second time. Again, one verdict that we know about. Of course, there's one on the bottom of Reed's deck. We're not sure where the other one is hiding out. I think it might be being cast I think right five, now. right? Yeah, five yeah. right there looks like a verdict with extort. So bye-bye Miss Cutter, bye-bye Elvish Mystic, and bye-bye good board position there for Andrew Shrout. Now Duke is starting to take over control of this game. Yeah, well, I mean, Shrout's left with no hand. Reed has the elixir going. Thanks to Blind Obedience, he doesn't really have to worry about getting fleece maimed. Uh, right now, Shrout does have a yet another decent play. He has on seven mana fleece main lines. Mm -hmm. so that's something that Reed has to deal with. I wonder if a Duke Liff counter spells in this matchup. I fleece mean, fleece main's going to resolve. It's going to come into play tapped. Now that there aren't counter spells, this fleece main's not getting answered by Reed's deck. He didn't ha like I said, he doesn't play the Celestial Flares, so I don't believe he even has a way to get this off the board once it's m once it's been monstrosityed. Um, once again, that doesn't mean Reed can't win. The uh, Elixir deck really does have a late game of just casting Sphinx's Revelation every turn, uh -huh. and the best part is I, I literally do mean every turn. <laughs> 
Now, this is going to be kind of neat, actually, because Sluice Main Lion, again, when this card was released, and uh, you know, everyone, this was the talk of the town. Now Green White's getting way too good. Hasn't really made its mark on the format. You see Strout's going to activate the monstrosity on Fleece Main Lion while Duke is shuffling up with his elixir. But right now in this situation, Duke is at 12, and this could be a problematic card for him right now. Yeah, he needs to find the Elspeth so that he can just make chump blockers for it forever. I mean, like I said, he can't actually get it off the board, but he does have powerful enough plays that he, he can ignore it, at least as long as it's only one. If there starts to becoming two or three of them, then, uh, then that will become a problem. Uh-oh, we've got five mana here, maybe six. So, ooh. And this is ooh. a spicy one of, yeah, yeah, out of Reed's board. This is Lavinia of the Tenth. So we'll get that one up here. Excuse on me. Screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to know what this does, too. Well, it's pro-red. That part doesn't matter. Yeah. I believe <laughs> when it comes into play, it detains a bunch of things. It okay. Detains, yeah. I believe it detains all all small converted mana cost cards. So it's going to actually detain the Fleece Main Lion here for a turn. So we'll have that Lavinia of the Tenth come up on the screen for you guys shortly so we can see exactly what that does. That's the Guild Champion. From that Azorius? Is, right, so there was there's a whole cycle of legendary rares from Dragon's Maze for each guild, and Lavinia is the one, is the rare for Azorius. Alright, so let's see what's going to happen here. Vault's looking tough. Getting into the red zone now so will do. Yeah, Reed's actually getting a little aggressive here. Let me see. A needle. A needle with Extort. The extort on the extort with blind obedience is kind of interesting. Just like how it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but it ends up being a really big deal over the course of the game. And now I think it's interesting that Reed has brought in, brought in the needles. Um, if you look at Andrew Shout's deck, obviously naming Fleece Main Lion would be a pretty could be a decent play. But but what else does he name with the needle in the matchup? I'm taking a look right now. I mean, Scavenging Ooze is a rather mediocre name. Yeah, like Experiment One is a mediocre, mediocre name. name. I guess I, uh, my assumption is that Reed probably believes that he has Mutavault somewhere out through his deck. And Mutavault is, of course, good against blue-white. Um, sure. Since, you know, it's just a harder remove threat. But green-white has such poor mana that they really can't afford to play Mutavault. So I can't imagine... I can't imagine Shroud's deck having Mutavault in it. We have the, the deck list here. It does not have it. So, I'm interested to see what he named with Needle. Is now he's going to play a Detention Sphere. Yeah, so t he's going to cast a Detention Sphere, and he's... Looks like he's he's extorting with it. Now Sphere does actually have, I believe Sphere has. To, is it a may or does he have to it name is a may. something? It okay, is a so may. you can just cast it for an extort, yeah. which is what Reed's doing. And he's set to draw so many cards. Glare Paris. Okay, so yeah, he's actually we're doing extort. we're extorting. We're extorting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're casting and killing our own things just to extort. Now he's gonna pass the turn back and try to get this game over with here. It's eight to one. It takes one more spell for Duke to get the job done. He has two attackers, so that should be good enough, especially because Blind Obedience means that Shrout can't play a blocker of his own. Yeah. So Shrout is going to pick up his permanence, and Reed Duke is going to win game number two. I'd like to see a third and final game of this matchup. I think it's really, really interesting. I like Shrout's deck a lot, actually. Well, Shrout's deck looks very good in this matchup. I also like... I like that Reed has gone back to the Blind Obedience plan. That's something we really haven't seen for a long time. I think when... When Gatecrash first came out for Pro Tour Montreal, there was a lot of players who in their Esper decks were trying to play um, the interaction of four Lingering Souls and then a couple Blind Obediences and actually, you know, one mat, like, extort plus swing with spirit tokens your way all the way from 20 to zero on your opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, without Lingering Souls, that's not, you can't really extort someone from 20 to zero. You have to play a real win con. Yep. Or, in Reed's case, play no win cons yeah. at all. <laughs> You see both players are going to go back to the sideboards here. I wonder if they're changing anything in particular. Now, of course, Shroud's got a better idea of what Reed's sideboard options do look like. Throughout the course of that game, if, um, you know, the one thing, again, that you did mention, Celestial Fair, Shroud has not seen one yet. He's not going to see one. But a lot of blue-white decks do have access, typically, to in between two to three of that card. So I don't know if he's going to sideboard maybe with that in mind or not. Again, we saw Scavenging use in the last game that didn't really do anything because of a last breath. So maybe he boards that out for another option here, does Shroud. But I, I think this is a matchup where he came into the tournament knowing that he needed to beat this deck, and I think he has the ability to beat this deck just with how his deck is crafted. And that's the thing I really, really like about it is that I think he came in one to try to beat what people perceive to be the best deck in the format in blue-white control. Yeah, and it, so I like how you put that when you said at this tournament, especially at the Invitational, 
everybody came in with a plan for this blue-white control deck. When a deck like this wins an event so close to the Invitational, you can, um, you can count on it being played, first of all, because it was, you know, it did so well in the hands of Huey Jensen. Okay, yeah. one of the top players initially. Also, this is the style of deck that is really going to be appealing to a lot of the top players here. So, yeah, I mean, green with aggro, something you normally don't want to run green-white creatures into a field of Wrath of Gods and Supreme yeah. Verdicts. That's, yeah. that's has tr traditionally been a difficult spot for green-white to be in. But then Andrew Shroud goes ahead and goes with that game plan, but he does it in such an interesting way to try to give himself that extra edge. Yeah, it seems like, you know, his deck is is kind of built to ha try to have a good matchup against, you know, the Supreme Verdict decks and then Mono Blue Devotion. And then, you know, he could probably have some game against maybe a Red-White Devotion or some of the Nykthos decks out there, potentially Mono Black as well. It's interesting just because the Green-White cards are so, so powerful, but they just haven't really had a home right now. Yeah, so I, I want to look back at the the one of Lavinia of the Tenth and Reed's sideboard. Um, so, okay, we're going to get the, the actual Oracle on, on the card. It's pro red. When it enters the battlefield, you detain each non land permanent your opponent's control with converted mana cost four or less. So it's not actually targeted, which is why I was able to hit the Fleece Main Lion there. Um, I'm interested as to where that card fits in in the deck. It's. It, it will buy him a turn pretty much every time he casts it, but the difficulty is that, you know, you have to make sure that the 4 4 is still relevant. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I mean, I like this card just because I like the card. Like the it's card's a, excellent. It's a, it's a sweet card. I don't know exactly where it fits into the deck and why there's one of them in the sideboard, but I'm not Reed Duke, I'm not Huey Jensen, it, I'm not Owen Turtenwald. It's possible that the protection from red is very relevant. You know, it's, it's an infinite blocker against a large red creature. Like, there's an Ember Swallower or something. Sure. Last Breath is going to take care of a Voice of Resurgence. Yeah. A voice probably the most expensive mythic to not be seeing any consistent play out well, there. Voice really took a hit with Theros, I yeah. would say. Yeah. You know, and Voice was traditionally the, the gold standard in this matchup. But now read, look at this. Glare of Heresy, Last Breath. Doesn't even, it's, it's just not something that the, the Revelation decks are scared of anymore. Yeah. So many answers. So many answers to the card. I mean, Last Breath is kind of the new hotness that everyone's playing now from Blue White since it's such an efficient removal when you don't care about the life gain. Howl Fountain going to come into play untapped here for Duke. Looks like he's going to resolve a divination. So two cards coming for the former Invitational Champion. Shroud's going to play Slesnia Charm on the end step. So a 2-2, two -two, so he does have some aggression here. But the one thing to keep in mind here, Matthias, you take a look at the mana base for Shroud right now, two planes, one forest. Does not have that extra green source. So if he does have a Boon Seder or an Advent of the Worm hanging out, he can't cast him. Yeah, at least right now, Reed doesn't have too much to be worried about. You see, Shroud does have a Boon Seder in his hand. He does have a Glare of Heresy, a Fleece Main Line as well. There is the line, going to pass the turn back, but does not have a second green source. Does Shroud. Yeah, he has a, the mist, a mist Cutter Hydra as well. He's a little choked on mana. Because Reed was on the play and has cast a Divination, uh, Shroud does not have too many turns to recover from that stumble. He'd really like to get a Monstrosity to counter on that Fleece Main Line. But because he's she's short on lands, you know, Reed is very likely not going to let that happen. Last Breath is going to take down that token. So this feels like Duke doesn't have a Supreme Bird. It doesn't mean that's true. It's just what it feels like. His Shroud does roll off a Temple Garden for the turn. So now all systems are a go, and he's only one land away from that Fleece Main Lion counter. Yeah, I think I think you are completely right that he doesn't have the Supreme Verdict. He probably doesn't even have the, the Detention Sphere, as in that situation we likely would have seen a Detention Sphere on Spleece Main Lion. It's possible that Reed has, actually, he, if he has the Verdict, if he had Last Breath Azorius Charm, this line is at, has the potential to be more devastating yeah, to Shroud. that's true. You know, for example, when you're in Shroud's position, I think he strategically is locked into swinging with his Fleece Main Lion, but his Azorius Charm is so good against him right now. Yeah, it's really this kind of interesting question, right, where if he doesn't attack, and now here comes a Mist Cutter Hydra for three, if he doesn't attack with Fleece Main Lion, you know, are you happy with right. recycling the Azorius Charm, or would you rather have him place that Fleece Main Lion on top of your deck like, so what he doesn't is draw he do a card? Yeah, if he's not attacking with Fleece Main Lion, what is he doing mm -hmm. here, right? So if Reed had a Verdict, he might have taken the extra damage there. Yeah. But I don't think he has a verdict. So Miss Cutter Hydra is going to come across for three. Here's a divination. So two more cards coming for the Duke. Draws an island, and I think a plane's among those cards. So he's got a he's got a lot of cards in his hand, which is going to be the normal case for Blue White. He just has to have his answers line up to Shroud's questions. Yeah, he has a third last breath in hand. I think one of the things Reed has to be very scared of is if Andrew can get a monstrosity counter on that Fleece Main line, he even has a Boon Seder in hand for it. He can make this creature very lethal. Top card's going to go to the bottom there for Reed. Temple of Silence is going to put it there. Now, is this going to be the elixir? It, it is. Should be. 
and what I've been impressed with with Elixir is not just how it's been late game it's late game potential in these these decks, but how relevant the gaining five life has Super been. Super relevant. I mean, one of my the complaints I had about Elixir when it first came out as a card was that it, it was White Sun's Passage, which is a two mana gain five life. Sure. And the worst part is that's a card you don't want to play, and you had to draw you had to draw multiple White Sun's <laughs> Passages because every time you shuffle it, you just get another one. Um, but it actually seems like two mana gain five. In, in a land where creatures are attacking for fours and fives, is, isn't even that bad. Boonsider on the end step here from Shroud, so not Evan of the Worm, but still a large creature nonetheless. So Shroud is going to untap and draw. You see Duke there at 10, a virtual 15. Going to come into the red zone. Will Shroud attacking for seven? Duke yeah. is going to go down to, looks like, three. Yeah, Shroud is still playing his cards like burn spells, which I really like here. You know, he could have saved the Boonsider to try to put it on a fleece main line, but like I said, he's just. Just pushing damage with his cards. Every card's a burn spell. It's it feels a lot like the the red black aggro decks of about a year ago. The ones that ever every creature had haste. Yeah, I do remember that deck. Yeah, Su they were suicide slide. It was they were satanic slide. Yeah, it was the yeah falcon wrath aristocrat thunder maw hell kite. It was just every single thing had haste, and it really does feel like that on Reed's side of the board. So Duke is at six. He's got a lot of cards in his hand since he just resolved a revelation from three. At a virtual 11 because of the elixir, but he is underneath some substantial pressure. And Shroud, again, he just passed the turn back with four mana available. That means so many things in green-white. Again, Celestian Charm, Skylasher, Boonsader, Avan of the Worm, Rootborn Defenses, even though we know he doesn't have that in his deck list. But that's so common for a green-white deck that Duke actually has to give that some real thought of, what if he has this? Can I possibly beat that? if he has it right now. Well, and that's what Shroud's deck's done really well. He is overloaded. Sup this deck is overloading the Reed's Supreme Verdicts. Uh -huh. You know, he needs them to get rid of the Mistcutter Hydras. Um, he needs them. Anytime Shroud plays two creatures, Reed basically needs a Supreme Verdict. Um, and now with, you know, there's a threat of Rootborn Defense. Because Reed only has four Verdicts, he probably just can't respect Rootborn Defenses as a card even. Now, this is a really interesting interaction. Jace comes into play. It's going to tick up. And so normally, Last Breath wouldn't be able to kill that Miscutter Hydra because it'll get minus one, minus one <laughs> when it attacks. <laughs> Last Breath can actually take care of it, and Duke has a Last Breath in his hand right now. So that line is is scary for him. It means he's dead to Celestia Charm or Land Boon Seder. Yes. But I th you're right. I think, he, I think he's going to go for that. I think that might be what he's trying to set up. You see, Shroud is like, okay, you've got two mana open. You've got a Jace that ticked up. What do I have to worry about? Do I have an end of turn threat to play? I think he's got a Boon Seder in his hand. Yeah, I... I do believe he has a Boon Seder. I don't think he has land number five. Okay. I think you just dropped down the Boon Seder here. But the problem with that is is that the Elixir is going to put him high enough, right, where he'll go up to 11 and the attack will be for 3, 6, 7, 8. So it won't be a lethal attack. Right. So let's see what Shroud draws this turn. And right now his hand, he has a Glare of Heresy. He's got a Fleece Main Line. He's got another Mystery card or two over there. So I'm not sure if Shroud wants to take the time to kill the Jace. I think he does because this is this is locking Reed into just cracking Elixir. Okay. And you don't want a Jace activation. Remember, Reed just needs Supreme Verdict. And really bad. The problem is if Reed does find Supreme Verdict, it's probably his game. Mm -hmm. Like, Shroud's hand has very little action beyond that. I think he has a, a Glare of Heresy and a Fleece Main Lion. Yeah, that's and a mystery card right now. Yeah, none of those, none of those are going to be good if Reed resolves a, a Revelation. Or, sorry, not a Revelation, but a Verdict. Yeah. So Jace is going to bite the dust here. And I believe Duke is going to go down to three after this attack. So he's at three. Shroud's at 26. But Shroud's life total obviously doesn't matter now, very much. after Shroud made that attack, I am surprised that Reed didn't do the last breath Me play. too. Me too. And you know a player of Reed's caliber. He he's saw not, it. He's oh, he not saw it. That. I'm aware. <laughs> you know, he's like, maybe you didn't catch it. It's like, no. Um, each player has their strength here. And that's one. Yeah, that, okay. that's a strength that you know Reed's not going to miss that play. So he's going to do it now. After Jace dies. And I guess the thought process there is maybe he just doesn't want to get blown up by Selesnia Charm. Since Shroud's not ever tapping into his mana is on turn. That could be the thinking as here comes the Muta Vault. Two and he passed the turn back. Two Selesnia Charms would certainly kill him. Um, there is the potential that if he last breath there, he could have saved his Jace. Mm -hmm. All right. Attack for lethal, says Shroud. Reed says, how about a Muta Vault? Yeah, Muta Vault. Really, really strong right here. And now Elixir. Suffle in. So, so he's going to go up to eight. Up to Interest, eight. Interesting thing here. 
Oh, well, never mind. I take that back. I was going to say, should he shuffle in after Mute Vault dies, but then he would be dead. So then he'd be I, dead. I take so it yes. back. I yeah, take so it back. my answer would be no. Yeah, so the answer would be should. no. Yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so Duke is at eight, and he's going to go down to four, assuming that you know everything goes accordingly here. Yes, that Boon Stater still is lethal next turn. Um, Reed will need something to deal with it. Remember, he's just one revelation from probably getting this game now. His life total, his life total is decently low, and... and Shroud's creatures all are flash, haste. Big. They're all, yeah, they're all really scary for the control deck. That was one of the things I think a lot of teams had found in, when this format first started at the Pro Tour was that the actual best way to attack the control decks was with green because green has such diversity of threats right now. You know, you have to deal with sometimes planeswalkers and hexproofers and flash creatures, you know, and pro blue creatures and haste creatures. And there's just there's enough of it that while Blue White can deal with all of them, it's hard for us to deal with all of them in a relevant fashion, doing it on time before it dies. Another last breath there from Duke is going to take care of his experiment one. You see Shroud finally extending his board a little bit, so he will get cleaned up pretty good here by a Supreme Verdict, but Duke does not have it still. Shroud's going to untap, take a draw step. Does he have a fifth land for that Fleece Main line? It's an experiment one off of the top. You see two copies of Glare of Heresy, and here's an attack, and that is going to do it! Andrew Shroud does defeat Reed Duke in three very close games. Green-White aggro, a deck pretty far off the map, takes down blue-white control, arguably the best deck in the format. Reed's Supreme Verdicts were so overloaded that game. It seemed just every turn of the game, in all, ga all the games, I was, we were just thinking, boy, Reed needs